services until next Sunday, Lord willing, and we will uh, resume our normal way of doing church. Um, but I do have a word that the Lord has spoken to my spirit, uh, and I long to deliver what the Lord has given me. And so if you are at home and you would like to uh, find yourself in the book of Mark, the ninth chapter, I'm going to read two verses to you. Uh, verse 23 and verse 24. And it reads, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I want to minister on this thought in spite of the evidence. Uh, if you will, join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I ask you right now that with us 
facing new circumstances and us facing new situations, I ask that you would still continue to minister to your people, minister to the body of this house and any of those that have tuned in to be a part of this service and a part of this word. I ask you right now that you would minister to them, that you would speak to their heart, to their mind, that you would deliver your word in the same way and fashion that you would if they were here. We give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that you are going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody agreed together by saying amen and amen. Mark 9, 23 and 24 says, if you can believe anything is possible. And that is an incredible statement. Uh, while looking into the face of this desperate man whose son is, is hopelessly demon possessed, Jesus proclaims a message of hope that really anyone can cling to. If you can believe, you can have your miracle. If you can believe, you can have your deliverance. If you can believe, the mountain in your life can be removed. If you can believe, the rivers that separate you from your promised land can be parted. If you can believe, the glory of the Lord can shine round about you in the middle of your darkest night. Yes. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. But it is the response of the Father that has always intrigued me. With tears, with conviction, and in all sincerity, the man cries out to Jesus, Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. What an incredible contradiction we have here. Doubt and faith at the same moment. The two ultimately seem mutually exclusive. Where there is doubt, there is no faith. And where there is faith, there can be no doubt. But here, we find them coexisting in the same man at the same moment. Faith and doubt. Faith is prepared to receive the miracle. Faith is prepared to embrace the promise. Faith is prepared to rise up in hope and say, I can believe. Faith is prepared to see his son set free from the demons that torment him. But doubt is there also. Doubt rears its ugly head and throws a wrench into things. Doubt tries to halt the miraculous before it ever happens. Doubt tries to distract from the divine. Faith rises in the heart, but doubt immediately throws this stumbling block in its path. Faith reaches for the promise, but doubt becomes this hindrance. Here, in this passage, we see these two contradicting things side by side operating in the same moment within the same man. A miracle is really in his grasp. The thing that he has prayed for, sought after, longed for is finally within his grasp and as faith reaches forth to grab a hold of the promise, doubt also rises with the exact same intensity and tries to impede the miraculous from ever taking place. Hear this truth today. Every single one of us has been given the measure of faith. But yet each of us also possess the capacity to doubt. Right, come on. It, it is inerrant. It is existent within every single one of us. It's there. There's nothing you can do about it. As much as faith always tries to grab a hold of the promises of God, doubt will always rise with the same measure 
and the same fervor and try to stop or impede you from getting those things. And, and while a lot of times we think of these things as opposite, the reality is that they are often both present at the same time within us. Faith is this incredibly powerful force in the life of every single one of us believers. It only takes the faith, the size of a small mustard seed, to see great and miraculous things occur in our lives. But yet doubt is the Achilles heel of our faith. Doubt is that ever-present agent of hell that attempts to keep us from seeing these powerful results of our faith. Doubt has but one purpose for existing. Doubt exists only to undermine our faith. Nothing good ever came from doubt. There has never been a useful product that has been produced by doubt. The doubt never built anything. Uh, doubt never achieved anything. Uh, doubt can't really accomplish anything. Any good doubt does not fuel any desires. Uh, it doesn't uh, inspire confidence. It has no real practical purpose. It only tears down and destroys. Doubt renders hopes and dreams sterile. It is the negative voice that casts its dark shadow over hope. That's really what doubt is. It was doubt that caused Eve to first eat of the forbidden fruit. The serpent attacked her with doubt. And trust me today, he is still doing the same thing to every single one of us today. Understand this, that doubt will rob you of the joy of walking with God. It was doubt that caused Cain to bring his insufficient offering to the Lord, which eventually led him to murder his brother Abel. Doubt is a killer. Doubt is a destroyer. It was doubt that kept Israel from the promised land and sent them back out into the wilderness. Doubt saw their enemies as giants and their brethren as grasshoppers. It was doubt that caused their vision to be skewed and caused them to miss out on the promises that God had for them. A doubt will keep you from ever realizing the promise and the provision of God in your life. It was doubt that also robbed Moses of the promised land when he struck the rock rather than speaking to the rock. He didn't think that the same thing would occur in a different way. He doubted what God had spoken to him, and so doubt robbed him of the promises that God had for him. It was doubt that caused the rich young ruler to leave the presence of Jesus with sadness and rejection instead of victory and rejoicing. Hear this pastor this morning. Doubt will rob you. Amen. If you allow doubt to exist in your life, it will do the one and only thing that it is there to do, which is to rob you. Doubt is the fog of confusion that causes us to question our direction. It lurks in the multitude of the unknowns that we encounter, calling us to question what we do not understand. But understand this today, nowhere is doubt ever of any benefit to a child of God. It is faith, not doubt, which enables us to achieve great things in God. It is faith, not doubt doubt that propels us into our divine destiny in God. It is faith, not doubt, which lays hold of the promises of God. And it is faith, not doubt, which is blessed over and over again by God. 
every single time that the Lord would be frustrated with his disciples, Jesus would say, oh, ye of little faith. But when he was moved to the miraculous, he would say, thy faith hath made thee whole. It is faith, not doubt, that reaps the miraculous from God. Yeah. In Romans, the fourth chapter, Paul speaks of the faith of Abraham. And starting in verse 18, it says, who against hope believed in hope? that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Yeah. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Verse 18 says it so well. Who against hope believed in hope? When he weighed everything that was against hope, he put his faith in hope. When he surveyed the considerable doubt that was positioned against hope, when he recognized all of the reasons why he should doubt, when he saw all of the evidence that declared that the situation was hopeless, he still chose hope. He elevated faith over doubt. Yeah. It didn't make sense. It wasn't the logical thing to do, but he lifted up his belief over his unbelief. Yes. Now, doubt reared its, its ugly little head. It said, consider your body. You are too old to become a father. But instead of considering the evidence Presented by doubt, Abraham chose to consider the faithfulness of God. Doubt rose up and said, Sarah's womb is dead. There is no way for a child to be born of Sarah. It is impossible. That time has passed. But instead of listening to doubt... Abraham chose to remember the promises that God had already kept yes. up to this point. You see, Abraham had learned a lot over the last 35 years of walking with God. He learned that with God, nothing is impossible. Yes. Doubt was indeed there. It tried to rob him of his promise. It tried to hinder the blessing of God. But the Bible says that Abraham considered it not. Can I say that again? The Bible says that doubt existed in the life of Abraham, but Abraham considered it yeah. Not Abraham said, I won't even give doubt a consideration yeah. at this point. I'm not going to make room in my life for doubt. The obstacles, yes, are many, but I'm not going to dwell on the obstacles. God has been faithful to me. I'm going to put my trust in him. Yeah. I wish Somebody would receive just that right there itself. Because we, a lot of times in our life, even right now with us not having an in-person service, we can look at the obstacles. We can focus on the things that make us doubt. But we need to be a little more like Father Abraham and consider it not. We need to not make room for doubt in our life. Paul said he staggered not 
at the promise of God through his unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Some of us need to be fully persuaded today that God is able to do what God said he is able to do in spite of the evidence that is being laid out before us. Doubt will come. I want you to understand me today that doubt will come into your life. At the same time that faith rises up to meet the challenge or at the same time that faith rises up to lay hold of the promises of God in your life, doubt will rear its ugly head and try to rob from you what God is getting ready to do in your life. Doubt is like a spiritual parasite. It sucks the life out of hope and it drains your faith dry. You need to learn today to recognize yes. doubt. Doubt is fixated on all of the reasons why you cannot see the promises of God come to pass in your life. Doubt will present you with all of the supporting evidence that says that the thing that you desire from God is absolutely impossible. Faith, however, is focused on the faithfulness of God. Faith is all about the source of our hope. It ignores all of the evidence and focuses itself on the God that can. Yes. Mm. Doubt focuses on reasons why God cannot bless. Reasons why you cannot receive a miracle from God. But while doubt is amassing its evidence, faith gathers its witnesses. Doubt delights in evidence. Faith, however, finds its strength in the testimony. Doubt will, hear me today, doubt will produce all the reasons why it cannot be. Ah, but faith testifies that God can do anything. Faith focuses on what God has already done and declares that what he has done before, he will definitely do it again. Now, it's just like the story in the Old Testament. David standing in front of Goliath. The giant, I'm sure, laughed at him. The circumstances are not in his favor. The evidence is in. The odds are overwhelmingly against him. But David does not weigh the evidence, instead, he calls upon the witnesses. Yeah. He begins to testify, I remember a lion. I remember a bear. And as he testifies with the witnesses, faith rises up and says, the same God who did it before is about to yeah. do it again. Can I take a page out of David's book this morning, can I testify in the face of doubt? I know this whole virus situation is supposed to be our new norm. I have heard people say it countless times. You may as well get used to it. It is our new norm. But let me call forth a witness from Luke 7 and 21. And it says, and in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Some of us need to grab a hold of this word and eliminate doubt from being the controlling factor in our life. Some of you need to lift your eyes from all of the obstacles in your life 
and realize that God has called you to do greater things. God has a plan and a purpose for your life that is bigger than where you are right now. Some of you need to lift up your eyes and catch a glimpse of the God who can. Doubt will say that you tried before and you failed. But faith will say that God has used some with much greater failures than yours. And if God can use them, then God can use you. The key difference here between doubt and faith is that doubt is grounded in what it can see, while faith is rooted in the unseen. Right. You need to lift your eyes this morning off of what you can see and understand. You need to ignore the evidence for a moment. I'm speaking to somebody this morning right now. Somebody's spirit right now. You need to ignore the evidence that you see. Yes. You need to ignore the evidence that is before you. If you will just believe, then the outcome will shake hell in spite yes. of the evidence that has been presented to you. Faith wants to stir you to believe in that which is unseen. Faith wants to move you to grasp that which defies the evidence. Yes. I understand today that you have both faith and doubt in your life. They both exist. I understand today that your faith wants to grasp the promise of God, that your faith wants to claim the miraculous provision of God from your life. But at the same time, doubt asserts itself in your heart. Doubt tries to reason that what God has done for others, he surely will not do for you. Doubt tries to convince you that you aren't good enough, that you don't have enough faith, that you are somehow disqualified. Hear me? You need to loose your faith and let it rise and overcome your doubt because God can. The testimony of faith is that God can. Yes. David said, I was young and now I'm old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed baking bread. God can. He can do whatever you need him to do today. I'm nearing the close this morning for some of you. In the ninth chapter of Mark, a tremendous thing happened. A man just like me and a man just like you. A man that harbored both faith and doubt in his heart chose, just like Abraham, to put his faith in God. Against hope, he believed in hope. i say that again for some of you. Against hope, all the things that stacked up against it, he still believed in hope. When everything was against him, when Jesus said, if you can believe anything is possible, he chose to believe. He chose to let his faith overwhelm his doubt. He chose to let his belief overcome his unbelief. And he received his miracle. Somebody needs to do just like he did. I know there are reasons why you harbor doubt in your heart. Hear me, because now I'm really speaking to somebody this morning. I know why there are reasons that you harbor doubt in your heart. But what you need to do today is you need to weigh all of those things that are against the hope in your life. And you need to choose hope in spite of the evidence. You need to look and say, I see everything that is stacked up against my hope, but yet today I still choose hope in spite of the evidence. You need to listen to the testimony of Scripture. You need to remember that with God, all things are 
possible. You need to remind yourself of the many mighty things that God has already done. And you need to tell yourself that if he did it before, he will do it again. Yes. God can. God will. Somebody needs to make up your mind today. Today, I choose to believe. Not because I can't see any obstacles. Not because there isn't any evidence to the contrary. But because my faith is greater than my doubt. Yes. Oh, get that. You need to choose today to believe. Not because there's not obstacles in front of you. Not because there's not evidence all around you. But because today your faith is greater than your doubt. Yes. I choose to put my faith in God because he has proven himself to be faithful. Today, let your belief overcome your unbelief because God wants to work in your life. Hear me and understand this. I know that the enemy has risen up against the church. I know that the enemy has stacked up evidence against the church. I know the enemy has made it his mission in this last day and hour to position evidence outside of the church in your personal life and inside the church corporately. The evidence is there. We should look at the evidence in our carnality and say we just can't continue down the same course that we have always walked down because of the evidence that is there. But I feel an unction of the Holy Ghost to tell you that God has allowed the evidence to stack up because he is looking for a people with a much greater faith in this last day and hour. When the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith? Or will he find a church that has succumbed to the evidence that has been put against them? I'm getting ready to wrap this up. It is my prayer today. It is my prayer this morning that you will look at all the evidence and say against hope. I believe in hope. I put my faith in God despite the evidence that has been stacked against me. I pray you've been blessed today. I pray that the Lord has spoken to your spirit today. I pray you've been ministered to today, and I look forward to seeing you in the house of God next Sunday, and I'm watching God move mightily in and through his people. In Jesus' name, be blessed this week.